Hello ladies, gentlemen, sisters and brothers. My name is Yvonne Weldon. I am a Rajruwan from Cowra here in New South Wales. I'm from the waters of the Clare, which later became known as the Lachlan and of the Murrumbidgee Rivers. I'd like to pay my respects to all elders past and present to you and the nation's country you are on. I am the elected chairperson of the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, who are the culture authority under the Aboriginal Land Rights Act for the land that I am on. The boundaries of our traditional owners are not defined by the hand and by the pen, but through the natural landscapes of the earth. The Royal Nations country covers the Hawkes River in the north, the Nepean in the west, and the Georges River in the south. My people have practiced our traditions for thousands of years and endless generations. One tradition that is shared in various forms across Australia is a welcome to country. It is more than just words, it is a spiritual process by honouring the ancestors' footsteps we are all walking in. Continuing the practice of the generations before us to the many generations to come. My people have been a part of this land for more than 60,000 years. We are the oldest living culture of the world. And on behalf of the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, the elders and the members, I welcome everyone to the land of the Gadigal. I acknowledge the Gadigal people and the people's lands that you're on, whose spirits and ancestors will always remain with these lands, our Mother Earth. For my people to survive for as long as we have, it's been through a continual practice of respect, collaboration, understanding, and a willingness to come together. There are many Aboriginal warriors that have crossed this land before all of us, creating pathways before there were any. And to give respect and honour, could you all please pause for a moment to remember the many sacrifices that have been made along the way the ones we will continue to make, and those we shouldn't have to. To all the finalists this evening, the Eureka Awards are about acknowledging you and the difference you are making. You are already winners with or without the award. No matter what walks of life we all come from, all of us need to support each other, bringing out hidden heartaches to share and bringing us all a strength together. The road travel alone is the longest, hardest road there is. I will join you and you can join me. Last year, the NAIDOC theme was, always was, and always will be. And this year's NAIDOC theme was, Hill Country. So whether you think about the land, our culture, our history, or the devastating impacts of past and current times, or the resilience of my people, we need to look after country and help it heal, just as we need to look after each other and heal together. So with that said, let us all draw upon my people's spirits as we continue on our journey. May my people's spirits walk with you and guide you as we strive forward for us all. Again, on behalf of the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, welcome to Gadigal Land. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Thank you.
Good evening, special guests and Eureka Prizes finalists. Welcome all. Thank you, Yvonne Weldon, for your welcome to country on this night of nights in the science world, the 31st Australian Museum Eureka Prizes Award Ceremony. I would also like to acknowledge the Gadigal people and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging on what was and always will be Aboriginal land. Tonight is a special evening in the nation's science calendar as we broadcast the Eureka Prizes live online for the second year due to COVID-19. For 31 years, the Eureka Prizes have played a crucial role in honouring excellence and educating the public on the way latest advances in science, as well as spotlighting leaders in the fields of technology, innovation, engineering and science communication. Joining us from around Australia are parliamentarians, dignitaries, trustees of the Australian Museum and our foundation, prize partners and program supporters, and importantly, finalists from each of the 16 Eureka Prize categories. I would like to acknowledge our special guests this evening. Her Excellency, the Honourable Margaret Beasley, ACQC, Governor of New South Wales, and Mr Dennis Wilson. The Honourable Don Harwin, MLC, the New South Wales Special Minister of State, Minister for the Public Service and Employee Relations, Aboriginal Affairs and the Arts Minister, and of course our Minister. The Honourable Matthew Keane, MP, newly appointed New South Wales Treasurer and Minister for Energy and Environment. The Honourable Dr Annabel Bennett, ACSE, the Board Chair of ANSTO. Dr Cathy Foley AO, Australia's Chief Scientist. Dr Alan Finkel AO from the Finkel Foundation and former Chief Scientist. I'd also like to welcome colleagues from the Australian Museum, including President of the Australian Museum Trust, David Armstrong. Professor Cathy Belov, AO, Pro Vice Chancellor of Global Engagement at the University of Sydney, who is also an Australian Museum trustee and chair of our Science Advisory Board. Cathy, it's wonderful to have you so actively involved. Professor Chris Helgen, Chief Scientist and the Director of the Australian Museum Research Institute, along with former Australian Museum Trust Presidents and Directors, especially renowned science broadcaster Robin Williams, who originally created the Eureka Prizes 31 years ago, and those years sure have flown, Robin. We also have our other prize presenters and program supporters. It's thanks to your ongoing support that the Australian Museum is able to conduct outstanding programs like the Eureka's. Joining us from the University of Technology, Sydney, Professor Kate McGrath, DVC and VP Research. From the University of New South Wales, Sydney, Professor Nicholas Fisk, AM, DVC of Research and Enterprise. From the University of Sydney, Professor Ian Young, Dean of Science, and the marvellous Dr. Carl Kruselnecki, AM. From Macquarie University, Professor Magnus Nyden, Executive Dean of Science and Engineering. And from the Department of Defence, Dr. Dale Lambert, Chief Cyber and Electronic Warfare Division. From the University of Queensland, Professor Bronwyn Harch, DVC, and VP Research and Innovation. We also welcome Duncan Challen, General Manager with Celestino's Sydney Science Park, and program supporter David Hall from Abbey's Bookshop, and our newest major supporter for the Australian Museum Eureka Prizes, Liz Chatwin, Country President of AstraZeneca, Australia and New Zealand. Liz, thank you so much for your support. And you'll be pleased to know that I'm double vaxxed with AZ and will be reopening the Australian Museum next Monday, the 11th of October, after this long lockdown in New South Wales for all those who are double vaccinated now that we've reached the 70% vaccination rate in our state. What a remarkable achievement in science to create a vaccine that is saving lives and helping to manage a global pandemic. And Liz, we know you and your team have played a big role here and around the world. Thank you so much. Also joining tonight are the 68 judges who lent their experience and gave literally hundreds of precious hours to review the outstanding number of entries from every state and territory. I have been a judge in the past, so I understand the commitment required and we sincerely thank you. 
I also want to acknowledge Bernie Hobbs, science writer and presenter, who'll be joining us tonight in a discussion panel. And last, but by no means least, Adam Spencer, our MC for this evening, who has shown his unwavering support over the years. Thank you so much, Adam. Tonight, we are celebrating 51 finalists across 16 prize categories, and they are joining us from their homes and workplaces right around our nation. The finalists for this year's Australian Museum Eureka Prizes embody the best scientific ideals, and their work is making a difference both here and globally, leading us all into new areas of discovery, community safety, and economic growth. Scientific exploration is at the very core of the Australian Museum's work. It's why we exist. Understanding our biodiversity and the unique species that make up our continent certainly helps us understand our past and importantly helps inform the future as we grapple with the impact of climate change. The important role women play in STEM is also on full display this year, with women accounting for seven of the nine finalists in the science leadership category. You're rocking it. It's now my great pleasure to welcome the Minister for the Arts, the Honourable Don Harwin, MLC. I'm joining you tonight uh, from uh, the traditional gathering place of the saltwater clans of the Broken Bay area. I'd like to pay my respect to their elders past and present and thank them for their continuing custodianship uh, of this beautiful place. 2021 marks the 31st uh, year of the Australian Museum's uh, Eureka Prizes. And it's a great pleasure to be here and to celebrate the achievements of our nation's incredible scientists. As Minister for the Arts, I'm proud of the way uh, museums deliver STEM education, inspiring visitors to understand the world around them. Science and the arts are closely aligned and museums are where the two worlds meet. Science informs government policy with science and research underpinning the growth, sustainability and profitability of the state's primary industries, as well as the innovation in technology that will drive this state and our nation forward. This pandemic has highlighted the importance of science uh, and how it influences our world for the better. Museums play a pivotal role in STEM education uh, by equipping visitors and particularly school students with the tools they need to understand the world. Growing up, our first interactions with science and culture are often at museums, which is why the New South Wales government has invested heavily in museums and cultural in, uh, infrastructure across the state. Uh, over the last five years in particular, including the award-winning Project Discovery renovation uh, at the Australian Museum. The Australian Museum has been sharing the science and cultural stories uh, of Australia and the Pacific with both tourists and local visitors for over 190 years. And I'm proud of the New South Wales government's investment in the Australian Museum to continue its capacity to share these stories for generations to come. The Eureka Prizes are about celebrating the excellence in science and innovation uh, in our institutions li uh, like the Australian Museum and we want them to advance. I'm particularly pleased also to see that women scientists have excelled in nominations within the leadership category in this year's Eureka Prizes, making up seven of the nine finalists an empowering sign for future generations of women in STEM. I congratulate all the finalists here tonight, and of course, I celebrate their outstanding achievement. Well, thank you, Yvonne Weldon. Kim McKayao and Mr. Harwin for such a great start to our show. Welcome to this special event rewarding excellence in the fields of research and innovation, leadership, science engagement and school science. My name's Adam Spencer and I'm thrilled to be your host for the 2021 Australian Museum Eureka 
prizes. Joining me in the studio to offer their insights on tonight's winners is science writer and reporter Bernie Hobbs hey. and chief scientist and director of the Australian Museum Research Institute, Professor Chris Helgen. I like to think of them as the Simon Cowell and Danny Minogue of the Eureka <laughs> Prizes. I just <laughs> won't say which one mm. is which. Now, we want to say a huge congratulations to all our finalists and thank them for joining us live from around the nation. And if one of you do find yourself a winner, we are looking forward to seeing your reaction on screen and hearing from you. Now, we encourage you to get social by jumping online and using the hashtag Eureka Prizes. For those of you wishing to share the good news on Twitter tonight, a word of warning from my own experience. To try and capture the name of the scientist you're giving a shout out to, the crux of their research with the relevant Twitter handles, I mean, is it UNSW at, or at the University of, in all in just 280 characters in under two minutes before they've even moved on, ah, the next, ah, I haven't finished, ah. <laughs> it can be very tough. Much easier, just follow at Eureka Prizes on Twitter, that's at Eureka Prizes. You can retweet or like our real-time announcements. Add a bit of special sauce on top for the scientists you're sending love hearts to. But in all social media tonight, it is hashtag Eureka Prizes. And don't be shy sharing the love. I'll catch up on some of the funniest and most heartfelt tweets throughout the evening. But it's time now to kick off the 2021 Australian Museum Eureka Prizes with our first award. First prize tonight, I'm delighted to welcome Professor Magnus Nyden, Executive Dean from the Faculty of Science and Engineering at Macquarie University, to announce the winner of the 2021 Macquarie University Eureka Prize for Outstanding Early Career Researcher. This prize is awarded for outstanding scientific research conducted by an individual early career researcher. And our finalists are... Dr. Emma Camp, University of Technology, Sydney. Associate Professor Rona Chandrawatha, University of New South Wales. Dr. Tess Reynolds, University of Sydney. Best of luck to all our finalists. Professor Nyden, please send us on our way this evening. Thank you, Adam. I have the envelope right here. It's a great joy to be able to announce to you today that the winner of the 2021 Macquarie University Eureka Prize for Outstanding Early Career Researcher is Dr. Emma Camp. Many congratulations. Wow, um, thank you. Um, oh, I'm quite speechless. Um, this is an amazing honour and I just want to say thank you so much to, you know, um, everyone that I work with. This is, um, oh, sorry, I'm really <laughs> taken aback. Um, everyone at UTS that supports me, uh, my mentor, David Suckett, who's just supported me throughout all of the students that I work with at UTS, um, within the Future East team and Climate Change Cluster, you're amazing. Um, all of the reef scientists that are working so hard to try and save the coral reefs, um, thank you. This is yeah for everyone. Um, and yeah, my friends and family, my, my husband and, and parents and everyone for um, yeah, for just supporting me and thank you. It truly really means a lot. Congratulations, Emma. You've been nominated before for another coral project. I get the sense you really love coral. Is there a sense of urgency about your work in 2021? You know, we've got COP26 around the corner. There's just never been a more important time for us to be focusing on the reefs. You know, we've still got a reefs worth fighting for and that's why the work we do now is just so important. Well said. Congratulations, Emma, and thank you so much, <laughs> Professor Nyden. Thank you very much. Congratulations again. Now to announce the winner of the 2021 Department of Industry, Innovation and Science Eureka Prize for STEM Inclusion. We're joined by someone we'll be seeing a bit of this evening, and that's great news because she rocks, Dr Cathy Foley AO, Australia's Chief Scientist. Good evening, Chief Scientist. This prize is for an initiative that has led to greater inclusion in science, technology, engineering and mathematics. And here are our finalists. Little Scientists Australia. 
STEM Enrichment Academy, Flinders University. Corey Tutt and Team Deadly Science. Chief Scientist, the internet is yours. Thank you very much, Adam, and it's a great pleasure to be here tonight. So, the winner of the 2021 Department of Industry, Science, Energy and Resources Eureka Prize for STEM Inclusion is Corey Tutt and the Team Deadly Science. Oh, congratulations, Tori. Well done, mate. Corey, you might be on mute on your computer there, mate. I'll just get you to hop in for a second. We're not going to take the award away, but if you want to unmute yourself there, we'll hear you a little bit more clearly. Unmute and fire Sorry, away. Congratulations. <laughs> there we go. I just want to, um, I just want to say a few words. Um, thank you to my amazing partner, Kate, and I just want to acknowledge that I'm on the lands of the Berapai and Dungadi people, and I pay my respects to the Elders, um, past and present and emerging, and any Aboriginal people that may be joining us tonight. Um, I want to thank my team at Deadly Science, but I also want to thank all our Deadly Junior Scientists. And I just want to um, say the words right now is that don't give up, you know, and I hope my biggest hope for these awards is that one day you're standing up here getting an award, not just for STEM inclusion, but being a Deadly Scientist. Um, keep going, keep trying hard, and thank you all um, from, you know, the bottom of my heart. And this is really for you guys, and I really hope that this creates the wave of, um, you know, the wave of energy that gets you keen on science and keeps you in school and hopefully you're up here one day, hopefully soon. Mate, you're a Mount, uh, proud Camilleroy man. You've said you think you're the luckiest guy in the world because you get to do your passion of science with all mob around Australia. Put some numbers on the success and the impact that deadly science has had. Well, I can, um, well, there's one example recently. I, um, I bumped in, I was just getting some new glasses, which they're groovy, and um, I had um, a kid run up to me and say, you know, thank you so much for writing this Deadly Science book and giving me this book because it means a lot because I see myself in this book and I can do science. Um, from humble beginnings of when I worked two jobs to fund Deadly Science not that long ago, actually, I've only been employed by Deadly Science since June. Um, this, this has had such a profound impact on our people and, and all the kids, but it's really a credit to them. Um, it's a credit to them because they love learning and my job's really easy and I am the luckiest person on earth because I get to experience this every day. Well, mate, on behalf of not tens or dozens or hundreds, but the tens of thousands of people who've influenced, congratulations, Corey Tutt and the team at Deadly Science. Congratulations. Dr. Cathy Foley is still with us and will shortly announce the winner of the 2021 Department of Industry, Innovation and Science Eureka Prize for Innovation in Citizen Science. It's a prize for demonstrated excellence in citizen science practice through an innovative research and community engagement project. OSMAP, Total Environment Centre and Macquarie University. Echidna CSI team, University of Adelaide and Pelican Lagoon Research and Wildlife Centre. Team SWAG, University of New South Wales. Well, so let's go back to you, Cathy. Hey, well, this is very exciting. The winner of the 2021 Department of Industry, Science, Energy and Resources Eureka Prize for the Innovation in Citizen Science goes to OzMap. We can see a very excited team from OzMap there. I believe we've got Dr. Michelle Blewett joining us. Congratulations, Michelle. Do you were never another team? Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, yes, wow. See, I'm in Adelaide, so I'm very fortunate to be able to share this um, with my wonderful volunteers. So I've just got a few words to say. So thank you to the Australian Museum for hosting this wonderful event. Sorry we can't all be together, maybe next year, with a little bit of luck. Thank you to the Department of Industry, Science, Energy and Resources for awarding this prize. And uh, we are so honoured to be, to be the award-winning group. 
At OSMAC, the Australian Microplastic Assessment Project is a program of the Total Environment Centre in collaboration with Macquarie University. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to direct this project since we began in mid-2018. A very special and sincere thanks to my team, all in Sydney, Kylie, Marais, happy birthday, Scott and Alex. I sincerely uh, thank you for your work ethic, your focus and your valued insights. And most of all, to the some of the 700 plus citizen scientists that we have trained in our program to the hours of removing over 3 million pieces of microplastics from our shorelines from all over Australia. The project really wouldn't be here uh, without you all. So thank you very much and um, cheers. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> oh, they are oh, they at OSMAT tonight. Osmat Congratulations to the entire team. And thank you so much thank to Dr. Kathy, Dr. Kathy Foley for announcing our winner. We'll see you again shortly. Now, this is always a fun part of any Eureka Prizes. It's time for the first of our Sleek Geek Awards for 2021. To announce the runners-up and the winner of the primary category, we've got Professor Ian Young from the University of Sydney. And with him, my old amigo and national treasure, Dr. Karl Krzyzelnitsky. Now, this is awarded for a short film that communicates a scientific concept in an accessible and engaging way. The theme for 2021 was big, so let's check out our finalists. Leon Hoare, Tour de Force, St Andrews Cathedral School, New South Wales. One of the biggest forces that can even keep planets in orbit around the sun? Let's find out! My hand is the force pushing the car. According to physicist Isaac Newton, a still object stays still until a force moves it, and a moving object keeps going constantly in a straight line. Zara Matter. Big problem, coral bleaching. PLC Sydney, New South Wales. It's coral bleaching? Well, I can tell you what it's not. It's not putting bleach in the water like this, dude. <laughs> Associate Professor Tracy Ainsworth from the Centre of Marine Science and Innovation at University of New South Wales explained what coral bleaching is and what some of the main causes are. Scarlet O'Neill and Scarlet Pawson. Super volcanoes. Oak Flats Public School, New South Wales. Is not your ordinary volcano. It forms when magma rises through the mantle but is unable to break through the crust. The magma gets trapped and creates an enormous pool. Over thousands of years, the pressure builds up. The huge volume of hot magma is less dense. Thanks, Adam. It's my pleasure to announce these awards. In third place, the award goes to Leon Hoare. In second place, the award goes to Zara Mata. And the winners of the 2021 University of Sydney Sleek Geek Science Eureka Prize primary goes to Scarlett Pawson and Scarlett O'Neill. Well done. Oh, <laughs> you, you heard the ooze and the excitement, but they won in 2020 and now in 2021. Back to back <laughs> Eureka Prizes for the two Scarlets. They are establishing a dynasty here. <laughs> Dr. Carl, isn't this wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> you might be on mute, Carl. I am. Sorry. <laughs> I might not be on mute. It's good to say. So they were amazing in the way that they were able to hone in on the concept of a supervolcano, realise that density was part of the situation causing it, and then tie it into other things. If you watch the whole video, they... Scarlet and Scarlet, how did you manage to come up with the idea that not only can these supervolcanoes kill us, but we can use them to make energy and put off global warming. Well, how'd you come up with that idea, man? We um we watched a video, a NASA video, and that told us the information. Yeah, when we used ah. it to the video. You follow that old rule, plagiarise, plagiarise, let nobody else's work evade your eyes. Your graphics are amazing, and your breadth of thought was just astonishing. Professor Ian, Professor Adam? 
Congratulations, Dr. Carl. Well said, and well done to our two Scarlets, back-to-back -back winners in the Sleek Geeks. And well done, of course, to Leon Hoare and Zara Matta. Everyone will be receiving vouchers to Abby's Bookshop. Thank you to David and the team at Abby's for your generous support in sponsoring the gift of reading. Thank you so much, Professor Young. Thank you, Dr. Carl. They'll be back soon for the return of the University of Sydney Sleek Geeks Science Eureka Prize for secondary school students. We're only four prizes in. There have been some amazing winners already. Bernie, Chris, what's left out for you? Well, apart from that gold disco jacket at the start, that was <laughs> I know. a brave choice. Uh, but obviously, like Sleek Geeks, the, the kids' um, films are always total uh, show stealers at, at any stage in the Eurekas. And this one, brave choice uh, in a year of pandemics and climate crises. They've gone with another apocalypse that could potentially end life as we know it, but they totally super sold volcanoes. it. Supervolcanoes. I mean, it's, yeah, supervolcanoes, <laughs> but done in, you know, science communication, absolute stellar style. They tell a great story. They use fantastic visuals. I mean, they had me at licorice bullets, to be honest, but it was just genius. Lots of fun. And they talked about the research that could help solve it anyway. And, so. and having selected that prize for many years it's intensely competitive yeah. to go back to back in a couple of years is a great achievement by those two girls they are the cohen brothers absolutely of the south coast what else did you like chris well i agree with the scarlets and scarlets you were amazing <laughs> and i've got a hunch adam that's not the last time we might see them get a look in by the eureka prizes but look i'm also so thrilled to see um Deadly Science mm. taking home an award. And Corey Tutt, we heard from him, spectacular. Now, Corey Tutt's everywhere on social media. I follow him on Twitter. If you're not, you should do that too. Follow and Deadly Science. Follow Corey. And yeah, that, but he's, mm. uh, he's everywhere. Mm. And, and that's the thing. He's, I don't know how he does it. The energy that that requires constantly. He's all over the place. And he's, he's, he's supporting all of these kids. The inspiration you know, that, that I get from that is incredible. The extraordinary dedication and the way he's reached so many young people. Just watch how many books are constantly flowing out all over Australia. Well, and, and someone has written a few books himself. If you get, <laughs> if you get stuck at a table with Corey at, at a fundraiser, don't worry, you're giving away many books very, very quickly. <laughs> Let's have a look at what some people are saying online. Rami Mandau was saying, I've got everything crossed tonight for folks nominated in the Eureka Prizes. Go, Corey, tut for Deadly Science. Well, Rami, you can uncross mm. all those things you had crossed because Corey got up on the night. Don't you worry about that. And for anyone who's feeling a bit lonely, uh, Lee Constable, whose hash, his handle yeah. is at Constababble, Hey all, I'm going to do a watch party on Twitch for the Eureka Prizes tonight. If you want virtual company while the winners are announced. So if you're at home enjoying the Regas, but could do with a little virtual bubby, Lee Constable. Consta Babble is the person you can go to. <laughs> Hashtag Eureka Prizes for all your social media comment tonight. We'd love to hear what you are thinking. Now, let's get back to the prizes. It's time now for the 2021 New South Wales Environment, Energy and Science Eureka Prize for Applied Environmental Research. Now, before we take a look at our finalists, let's hear from the Honourable Matthew Keane MP, New South Wales Treasurer and Minister for Energy and the Environment. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for the opportunity to announce the winner of the New South Wales Environment, Energy and Science Eureka Prize for Applied Environmental Research. Firstly, I want to thank the Australian scientific community who have been absolutely critical in guiding the people of New South Wales and the government's decision making through the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. We listened to the science during COVID-19, saving thousands of lives. We have developed vaccines to save thousands more. Let's not forget back in March this year, we saw the worst flooding in Sydney in over 60 years. During this event, we relied on water modellers to guide evacuations and a new rapid testing technique by our own environmental scientists, testing floodwaters for sewage contamination and protecting the health of the community. What these examples show us is that our scientific experts are there working with us so that we can tackle our state's biggest challenges. Now is the time to listen to the science as we've done during COVID-19 and take the same approach to tackle our greatest challenges yet. Climate change, decarbonising our economy and reaching net zero emissions by 2050. 
While listening to the science, we are also seeking advice from our economic specialists. In DPI, we have a team that combines the exact mix of expertise in our science, economics and insights division who sponsor this award. While our focus is on decarbonising our economy and driving down emissions, we are also taking advantage of huge economic opportunities. We are increasing renewable energy generation across the state and using incentives to drive the uptake of electric vehicles. So noting the challenge, challenging year that we've had, it's more important than ever to recognise the Australian scientific community and the incredible work they do. It is an absolute pleasure to be involved in this year's Australian Museum Eureka Prizes. My thanks to the finalists and the winners this evening. Thank you so much, Minister Keane. This prize is for outstanding research that has led to a practical improvement in the management or protection of Australia's natural environment posed by threats such as bushfires, pests, weeds and climate change. And our finalists are... Coral Nurture Program, University of Technology Sydney and Wavelength Reef Cruises. Future Feed, CSIRO. James Cook University and Meat and Livestock Australia. New South Wales Bushfire Hub, University of Wollongong, Western Sydney University, University of Tasmania and University of New South Wales. Minister Keane, over to you. It gives me great pleasure to congratulate the New South Wales Bushfire Hub. Congratulations and well done. Congratulations um, wow. to the team at the New South Wales Bushfire Hub. Represented tonight is Owen Price. Would you like to say a few words, Owen? Yes, thank you. Um, look, it's hard to put into words how wonderful this is for us, but I can honestly say because I checked that for the, for the team, um, this is the pinnacle of our careers. So thank you so much. Um, as well as the six people who are named here, um, there's 23, the 29 people who worked on the reports we did for the bushfire inquiry. And many of them have contributions equal to the, to the six named. I want to pick out a few people. One is Ross Bradstock. He was the director and the leader bef before he retired last year. And it was him that push for the inquiry to use our services and have the scientific approach to understanding these bushfires. And also to Mary O'Kane and uh, Dave Owens, who are the, I think we call them the inquisitors of the, the inquiry, who, who took, that, took that on board and ran with it. Um, and then lastly, of course, I want to say thank you to the, the Australian Museum for hosting these and promoting these awards to promote rigorous science. And I think we need a plug right now in these uh, days when the culture is very much about uh, misinformation and um, argument. And the bushfires of 2019-20 are a really good example because everybody has an opinion about what happened and what to do about them. Um, but the truth is it's really, really complicated. And if you don't do this uh, holistic um, multi-level multi analysis um, you're really not going to get a very clear idea of, of what to do. So thank you to everybody. This is fascinating stuff because it was traumatic times that made not just national but international news, Owen, but what we learned from your research was there are still so many gaps in our understanding as to the causes and impacts of catastrophic events like this. Well, yes, and it's actually I mean, it's a benefit for us, of course, because that means we can keep researching forever, but there is, there is so much that we still don't understand and that we really need to because it, the, the uh, implications are huge. Well, congratulations, Owen, and to everyone in the team. A much-deserved win to the New South Wales Bushfire Hub. And thank you, Minister Keane, for joining us this evening to announce this award. I'm delighted now to welcome back Kim McKay AO, Director and CEO of the Australian Museum, who's going to announce our next winner. This is awarded to an Australian journalist or journalist team whose work is assessed as having most effectively communicated scientific issues to the public. And here are our finalists. Nicole Hashem, Wes Mountain, Anthea Basakis, Sunandra Kriya, Ben Clark and Michael Lund. The Conversation. 
Patient Zero, Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Dr. Jackson Ryan, CNET. Here we have our finalists, three journalists at the absolute top of their game. Over to you, Kim. Thanks, Adam. I can't underestimate the importance of science journalism in our community. It has the power to cut through the babble and misinformation in this post-truth world and makes us more aware and even stirs us to take action. I'm pleased to announce the winner of the 2021 Australian Museum Eureka Prize for Science Journalism. From the ABC, Patient Zero. <laughs> Congratulations, Libby, to you and the whole team at the ABC. Well done on your win. Thank you so much. This is um, the cherry on top, really. We absolutely love making this program. Um, I want to say a big thank you to acknowledgement of the team who makes this show. Um, the executive Bye. producer is Joel Werner and our amazing producing team uh, includes Carl Smith, Shane Anderson, James Bull and Jane Lee. And we also had some reporting from the ABC's Indigenous Communities reporter, Nakari Thorpe. Um, and our sound engineer is Tim Jenkins. He's the audio wizard that makes it sound so beautiful. Um, and of course, also a big thank you to the ABC science editor, Jonathan Webb, and the manager of Radio National, Kath Dwyer, and just in general to the ABC and also the support from the BBC who helped us make this show. It's only fitting that your award for journalism on disease outbreaks is being presented with most of your team in some form of lockdown. Did that make <laughs> the reporting itself more challenging? Yeah, it did. We um, we made the first season of the show uh, in the middle of last year, right in the kind of first lockdown. Um, and then the second season this year, also partly in lockdown. And our team is um, really across the country. Um, some of us are in Sydney. We've got producers in Brisbane. Um, and so, yeah, it's a very much a collaborative effort, but um, the team's amazing. And we're also very fortunate to um, speak to so many wonderful scientists and researchers who share their expertise and insights and yeah help us bring science to big audiences so we're, we're really grateful for their time as well and i must ask just quickly it's a contro controversial subject did you stir up the trolls a bit as they say um i think it's a bit hard to avoid covering the pandemic to get a, a bit of trolls um but i think mostly people were pretty on board with them we had we had some great support and we hope to really bring in an audience that doesn't necessarily engage with science or health journalism a lot um and and we think we did that and we're we're particularly proud of that congratulations much deserved to everyone on the team at patient zero and thank you so much kim mckay Next up, the Australian Infectious Diseases Research Centre Eureka Prize for Infectious Diseases Research. And we welcome Professor Bronwyn Harsh, Deputy Vice-Chancellor for Research and Innovation at the University of Queensland. Bronwyn, thank you so much for joining us. This is a prize for outstanding infectious diseases research that benefits or has the potential to benefit human health. And our finalists are... Professor Julie Bynes, Murdoch Children's Research Institute and University of Melbourne. Dodi COVID Immunity Group, University of Melbourne and Royal Melbourne Hospital, Dodi Institute. World Mosquito Program Impact Assessment Team, Monash University. It's been a pretty amazing time for infectious diseases over the last year and a half. Here are our three wonderful finalists. Over to you, Professor Bronwyn Harch. Thanks very much, Adam. I'd like to congratulate all the finalists this evening and now to announce the winner of the 2021 Australian Infectious Diseases Research Centre Eureka Prize for Infectious Diseases Research is Professor Julie Bynes. Congratulations, Professor Julie Bonds. You've won yourself a Eureka Prize. Oh, that's absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. It's a great honour for our team. Four decades of work, lots of uh, collaboration between clinicians. Lost the first one, mate. Zero from two now. And so thank you very much. It's uh, a great honour. And Julie, RV3BB. 
I love the name. It's very catchy. Why is RB3BB so important? That's because it uh, reflects the BB is uh, reflecting Ruth Bishop, who discovered rotavirus, and Graham Barnes, who is the major clinical researcher that pursued the, the vaccine for as a neonatal vaccine. So um, a great recognition of the legacy um, that these great scientists have had. Congratulations. You're working on an oral vaccine that could save thousands and thousands of lives, in particular in the third world. Congratulations to yourself and everyone at the team, Professor Julie Bynes. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. And thank, thank you. you so much, Professor Harsh. Now to announce the winner of the 2021 ANSTO Eureka Prize for Innovative Use of Technology, I'm joined by the board chair of ANSTO, the Honourable Dr Annabel Bennett. This prize is awarded for an innovative application of a new or existing technology that has led to a significantly improved research outcome. And here are the finalists. Professor Justin Gooding. Professor Maria Cavallaris AM. Dr. Julio Ribeiro. Dr. Aidan Omani. Dr. Robert Utamar. And Dr. Lakmali Atapatu. University of New South Wales. Australian Centre for Nanomedicine, Children's Cancer Institute and InVenture Life Science Pritchard Limited. Membrane Team, Monash University, RMIT University, University of Texas and CSIRO. Team Chimera, University of Queensland, Monash University, and QIMR Berghofer Medical Research Institute. There they are, our finalists in many different arrangements there. We've got the traditional tie, we've got the black tie, we've got the entire party brigade going on all fully masked. I'll throw to you, Dr. Annabelle Bennett. Please unmute yourself and let us know who's won the award. Well, congratulations, everybody. The winners of the 2021 ANSTO Eureka Prize for Innovative Use of Technology are Professor Justin Gooding, Professor Maria Cavallaris AM, Dr. Julio Ribeiro, Dr. Aidan Omani, Dr. Robert Utama, Dr. Lakmali Atapatu. And congratulations. Congratulations, Justin Gooding. You're looking fantastic there in black tie, my friend. What would you like to say on this award moment? <laughs> I am socially distanced, I assure you. Um, firstly, we wanted to thank the, the selection panel. The team wanted to dedicate this award to uh, my beloved wife, Katerina Gauss, scientific professor Katerina Gauss, who passed away um, in March this year from a rare form of aggressive cancer. And what we learned in that process was that um, as good as the clinicians are and as dedicated as they are, they need more information to understand what the cancer is doing and how to treat it. And that's exactly what this technology is designed to do. It's designed to allow us to make lots of 3D models of somebody's cancer, even from their own cells, and provide that sort of information to the clinicians as how it might, um, how they might, might best treat the condition. And then hopefully less people will go through what we went through. The vision behind the, the idea came from the CEO, Inventio Giulio. Um, Aiden was the genius behind the printer. Uh, the brilliance at the bench came from Lac Marley and Robert. Maria guided the cancer biology and I went along for the ride. Kat would be so proud. She really loved this project. Thank you. Justin, thank you so much for sharing us. It must be a difficult at the same time joyous occasion. From what I understand, it's not just the quality of the 3D modelling, but it's fast and it's cheap. How did you bring those factors together and why is that so important in this field? Yeah, it's so important because... Biology has got a lot of variance to it and, and therefore you need to make a lot of models quickly so that you can get statistically relevant data. And really the, the genius came, or the way we can do that really comes from what the printer can do and the way it combines with the inks that mimic the environment around the cells that, so we can mimic whatever the environment might be for a given cancer. So it really comes down to the, the, the bench researchers and the, and the printer designer. They're the, they're the geniuses behind this. You've spoken about pride. You're right. She would have been proud. And we're, we're proud too, Justin. Congratulations to you and the entire team. Thank you. What an amazing and special moment here. And thank you again, Dr. Bennett, for joining us. You're here at the 2021 Eureka Prizes.
Well, Bernie and Chris, wasn't that emotional? Justin Gooding's mm. wife passed away from an aggressive cancer earlier this year and, and this research is in that exact space. Clinicians who try their hardest to do so well are going to be assisted by cutting-edge 3D imaging and modelling mm. to hopefully hope, in the case, and he said his, his wife would have been so, so proud. As, as she rightly should be. And look, I don't know how easy it is to understand this technology, but it's basically like a bread maker for growing tumours that then you can test your drugs on. So you can dial up exactly the kind of tumour, exactly all the kinds of cells you need. It's a phenomenal step, and I'm so happy that Justin's been... And people would ordered. understand why 3D is better than 2D, but normally when you go up in scale, there's increased cost, and, and it's yeah. by degrees of 10 more complicated and takes longer. It's the speed mm. and cost efficiency of that system that's that's truly... It's a real leap. ..mind-blowing. What else have you seen over the last few awards that you like the look of? Well, you know, Adam, that, uh, what a moment that was. And, you know, it reminded me, by watching that incredible lineup of, of finalists and winners, uh, just of the most fundamental challenges that mm. these scientists and communicators and uh, initiatives are focused on. After decades of incredibly cutting-edge work, and lots of gains, cancer remains one of the thorniest problems to all of science. And um, we saw the winner with Julie Bynes and rotavirus, a global problem, especially in the developing world. Uh, we saw um, patient zero and COVID-19, the most acute issue facing science and society now. And of course, um, I was inspired to see New South Wales Bushfire Hub take away an award too. This is you know, the incredible work they're doing to understand and combat yeah. bushfires, which will be all the more important in 21st century Australia and around the world. And with the rotavirus, I'd love that, I'd love that the, 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 the name of, of, the, of the research contained the people who've made so much happen. And, and, and also, because we're, we're just looking on the verge of COVID, like we might have oral vaccines, that's a breakthrough. And it's an oral vaccine she's and working not on. not only that, like we've got oral vaccines for kids here now, but they're not giving them until they're two months old. But if you can catch a baby at the clinic where it's being delivered, that just really ramps up how effective it can be. And that's what's going to make the real difference in developing countries. People have been hitting us up on social media with what they like the look of and Jane here who said it's been a privilege to work with Julie Bynes. Wonderful to see the work she's had led in teams in Australia, Indonesia and Malawi on a neonatal rotavirus vaccine acknowledged as a finalist in the Eureka Prize as well. Jane, she's not a finalist anymore, she's a winner and how's this? Mark Uwe who's part of the Bushfire Hub team. Uh, he tweeted, in advance of the Eureka Prizes, the only prize I've ever won before was a school raffle. <laughs> so it's quite exciting to be part of a team, the Bushfire Hub, as a finalist in the Eureka Prize. Oh, Not just standing. a finalist anymore. Mm. No offence, Mark. Yeah. You could take that school <laughs> raffle and slide it down the ledge a little bit. And, 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 and you can often read into uh, people's social media handles a little bit about themselves. Owen, who we spoke to, yeah. his social media handle, Owen Bushfire. Wow. It's one, of the, it's one of those classic, I know you're Minnesota born yourself, but That's you've been right. here long enough to know. It's a classic Australian blight. And even at those last tragic mm. fires, we learnt there's still massive gaps in our knowledge about cause and impact. And how incredible to use evidence-based science so quickly to get in and make policy changes. It's fantastic work that's been done by the Hub. It's wonderful, wonderful stuff. And more great stories are coming tonight. To all of those who are sharing their thoughts tonight, there's still time to get social and join the conversation. Don't forget to use the hashtag Eureka Prizes. And now, let's go back to the prizes. the 2021 Department of Defence Eureka Prize for Outstanding Science in Safeguarding Australia. And prior to announcing the winner, let's hear from the Chief of Cyber and Electronic Warfare Division at the Department of Defence, Dr Dale Lambert. Thank you. Before I announce the Defence Science and Technology Eureka Prize for Safeguarding Australia, I would like to mention how proud I am of the significant contributions made by Australian scientists every day to safeguard our nation. Because for the second year in a row, the world's reliance on science and technology has been brought to the forefront of our national media. It gives me great pleasure to be involved in this year's Eureka Prizes, and I offer my congratulations to all finalists and winners from tonight's event. 
This prize is for outstanding research that has led to or is likely to lead to innovative solutions for Australia's national security. And here are the finalists. Cross-domain desktop compositor. University of Melbourne. Defence Science and Technology Group. University of New South Wales and CSIRO's Data61. Fowey Work Systems Design Team, Curtin University. Strongbond, Western Sydney University and Defence Science and Technology Group. Our finalists are all there, and I'll tell you, the chap in the middle's got quite a decent library, hasn't he? Dr Lambert, over to you. The winner of the Eureka Prize for Outstanding Science in Safeguarding Australia is the Cross Domain Desktop Compositor, comprising team members from the University of Melbourne, Defence Science and Technology Group, the University of New South Wales, Sydney, and CSIRO's Data61. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations, Professor Murray. Would you like to say a few words on behalf of the team? Certainly would. Thanks, Adam. Uh, look, on behalf of my co-entrants, Mark Beaumont and Robert Cezanne, it is an honour to accept this award. Uh, the Cross Domain Desktop Compositor shows what is possible when Australian institutions collaborate to develop sovereign capability that is unmatched elsewhere in the world. Our project builds on decades of Australian innovation, and this award recognises the many individuals who've contributed from DST Group, CSIRO, University of Melbourne, UNSW, and from industry. Special mentions need to go to Kevin Elphinstone at UNSW, who was instrumental in establishing the initial collaboration on which the CDDC's success has been built, and also to researchers and engineers including Jim McCarthy, Ihor Coos, Kent McLeod and Stephen Sherratt. And finally, to project champions Jody Steele, Daniela Trano, Chris North, Ben Sorensen, John Dean and Gernot Heiser. Oh, yeah, it's an absolute honour. Thank you. Now, often in the race between goodies and baddies in cyber, new solutions get more complicated than those that they're replacing. But this system's being heralded as both secure and simple. H how did you crack that magic alliance? That's exactly right. So it, it, normally, as you say, when we build a more secure system, either it gets uh, more complicated or it gets harder to use. With this system, it actually it's easier to use. It makes systems easier to use and more secure and it's simpler. And the way that we did that was by combining some very clever hardware engineering brought to us by DST Group and some very clever software engineering uh, that work together in concert to reduce the complexity and build a more secure system. So, so Toby, when I go to bed tonight, can I sleep soundly? Are we winning? Well, it, I would never say, you know, one way or the other, Adam, but I think if we keep investing in innovations like this, we'll definitely be getting closer every day. OK, well, I do have to wrap it up there, Tony. I've been warned if I talk to you for more than a couple of minutes, Toby, you can work out all my passwords just from analysing my retina movement. So congratulations to you and everyone at Cross Domain Desktop Compositor. And thank you so much, Dr Lambert. Joining us now is Professor Kate McGrath, Deputy Vice-Chancellor and Vice-President of Research at the University of Technology, Sydney, who will announce the winner of the 2021 University of Technology Sydney Eureka Prize for Outstanding Mentor of Young Researchers. This award is for an individual who has helped develop the next generation of Australia's scientific researchers, and here are our finalists. Professor Sara Dolnicha, University of Queensland. Professor Karu Assel, University of Technology, Sydney. Dr. Melina Georgisakis, Franklin Women. There are our finalists all ready to go. I'll hand over to you now, Professor McGrath. Thank you very much, Adam. Um, the winner of the 2021 University of Technology Sydney Eureka Prize for Outstanding Mentor of Young Researchers is Dr. Melina Georgisakis. Congratulations, Melina. Well done. We could see a little bit of someone in the side of the shot. A happy family. Well done, Melina. Thanks, Adam. Yes, I've got my little support crew here. Um, I'm just, yes, yeah, so grateful to have this acknowledgement. Um, 
A big thank you particularly to UTS and the Eureka Awards to give, for giving mentoring in science such an amazing platform. And on that note, um, a shout out to my two co-finalists. You know, it was my privilege to be up here with you. Anyone who's been following along for the ride has known what a crazy adventure Franklin Women has been for me. And so many people have been backing me along this journey, but there's a few special mentions. Um, my amazing husband and family here and tuning in virtually have backed me to also follow, always follow my heart to do something that I love. Um, the Franklin Women team who have been there from the get-go and all the organisations who have got behind our mentoring program and the team at Surrendus um, who facilitate it. Um, but last but definitely not least, uh, I really want to thank all of the women over the years who have trusted me but also members of the Franklin Women community with their stories and their career journey because this award really is for them. So it's thank you. It's a fantastic mentoring scheme for young women getting older female mentors insights based in some ways on your own experience in the industry, am I right? Yeah, that's right. So I was a, um, I am still a scientist, but I, um, I launched Franklin Women when I was very early in my own career because I needed to fill a gap um, with mentoring myself. And uniquely with this mentoring program, it's not just women mentors, but also um, senior male leaders in the sector. And I think that's what really has seen the ripple effect of it. And it's been so rewarding. Fantastic. Why is it so important for mentorship for female scientists, Georgia? Oh, gosh, I think this year has shown um, more than ever the importance of science um, for both the health and economic prosperity of our community. And it's tough for everyone in the sector, but it's particularly tough for some individuals. And, and the last 18 months has shown for women who have a number of additional burdens and whatever we can do to lift them up um, and address some of these barriers that they feel so that they can be equally represented and able to participate. It's a benefit for them, but it's a benefit for all of society. Well, congratulations, Dr. Molina Georgiosakis and your wonderful family there. And again, congratulations and thank you, Professor McGrath. I'm delighted now to welcome the President of the Australian Museum Trust, David Armstrong, who will announce the winner of the 2021 Eureka Prize for Excellence in Interdisciplinary Scientific Research. Good evening, David. Adam, welcome. Uh, nice to see you. This is uh, an award out, out... Thanks, Adam. Before I begin, may I offer, uh, on behalf of my fellow Australian Museum trustees and the trustees of the Australian Museum Foundation and the Lizard Island Reef Research Foundation, my sincere congratulations to all the finalists this evening and their outstanding achievements. 2027 will mark the 200th anniversary of the Australian Museum, our nation's first museum. This milestone anniversary presents a once in a generation opportunity to build and expand our world-class institution for the next 100 years. Our vision is to build an architectural landmark, an iconic institution, and a new home for the beating heart of science, education, and cultural knowledge at the gateway to Sydney's CBD. An Australian museum that will take its place amongst the world's leading history and scientific institutions delivering a globally renowned museum that is befitting of a true global city for the people of New South Wales, Australia and the world. Tonight is all about recognising and celebrating the outstanding work of the 2021 Australian Museum Eureka Prize finalists. And it's incredibly important we take the time to publicly recognise and celebrate the great works of scientists and science communicators because many of you are often working to solve tough problems, not for yourselves, but for the benefit of society, our country, and indeed the world. Thank you for all you do and enjoy receiving the recognition you so thoroughly deserve. And now to announce the winners of the 2021 Eureka Prize for Excellence in Interdisciplinary Science Research. Let's meet our finalists in the category. Lindel Bromham, Felicity Meekins, Shia Hua and Cassandra Algy, Australian National University, University of Queensland and Karen Carney Art and Culture Aboriginal Corporation. The Carbon Cybernetics Group, University of Melbourne, St Vincent's Hospital, National Vision Research Institute, Carbon Cybernetics 
and RMIT University. You Breathe, University of New South Wales. David, if you could please announce the winners in our category. Congratulations to our winners. Joining us on behalf of the group is Felicity Meekins. Congratulations, Felicity Meekins and the team. Felicity, congratulations on winning your Eureka Award. Fantastic news, thanks very much. I'm beaming in from Yagger and Turrbal land, land that was never ceded. Um, but I'd like to, everyone to think right now about Gurindji country, hence the painting in the background here. Um, our first and foremost thanks are to the Gurindji community in the Northern Territory who have, have been incredibly patient with us over the years, documenting their very precious, precious language and its evolution over generations of people. Um, Cassandra and I have been working together for the past two decades. Uh, Lyndall Bromham, Jawa and I met each other through the ARC Centre of Excellence for Dynamics of Language, um, where we recognised that population genetics methods could be applied to language variation and evolutionary data. Um, so this is very exciting. We've got some pretty significant, somewhat disturbing findings, for instance, that the effect of school, um, English schooling has been detrimental to the vitality of Indigenous languages. So in a sense, part of this is really a plug for bilingual education and an investment in languages in Australia ahead of the UNESCO International Decade of Indigenous Languages. So thanks very much to everyone. To quote your citation, an Indigenous community member, a linguist, a mathematician and a biologist, it almost sounds like the start of one of those bad jokes, walks into a bar. What an amazing group of people you've brought together on this project. Yeah, it probably doesn't get any more interdisciplinary than that. But I think this is where uh, language sciences and evolutionary science really um, meet each other. I think that uh, language um, has been benefiting a lot from evolutionary models in biology. And I think biology is really benefiting a lot from language data because we can see evolution uh, progressing at a much faster rate. So I think um, it's a really wonderful marriage of disciplines. In particular, you looked at the Gurindji language. What have you learned about Gurindji and Indigenous languages more generally? Yeah, so in Australia, um, uh, many Indigenous languages are highly endangered. Of the 350 that were first spoken um, before colonisation, uh, perhaps only 14 now have child language learners. So there's a lot of grief around that and we hear a lot about um, the loss of language. But actually what's really interesting about this community is the birth of a new language, Gurindji Creole. And a lot of our work has been um, geared towards really drawing attention to some of the fascinating and dynamic language practices that younger generations of Indigenous people are um, really leading across the country. Well, congratulations, Felicity, to you and the entire team. And thank you so much, David, for joining us. We've got just six more awards to hand out, including the prestigious Amri Medal. But right now, we're joined by Duncan Challen, the General Manager of Sydney Science Park Celestino, to announce the winner of the 2021 Celestino Eureka Prize for promoting the understanding of science. This prize is awarded to an individual scientist who shared their expertise with a broad audience, informing, enthusing, and engaging the public. Let's meet our finalists. Dr Niraj Lal, Australian National University and Australian Energy Market Operator. Professor Veena Sahawalia, University of New South Wales. Associate Professor Adriana Beres, University of New South Wales and Sydney Institute of Marine Science. Three wonderful finalists from three tremendous Australian scientific institutions. Over to you, Duncan Challen. The winner of the 2021 Celestino Eureka Prize for promoting understanding of science is Dr. Naraj Lal. Congratulations, Naraj. You must be proud. Well done. You've won yourself a Eureka Prize. Oh, wow. Uh, thanks, Adam. Uh, I didn't... Then if we do win this one, uh, I'd like to say thanks to my uh, fellow finalists. It's a privilege to be in your company, Billy. Uh, I'd like to thank the brilliant people that I've been lucky enough to work with 
uh, in particular, Poppy Stockle, the wonderful director of the Cutlass episodes that I've been on, uh, Samia Bella and Emma Gibbs, the producers of Imagine This on ABC Kids Listen, and uh, Adam Carruthers, the illustrator of our kids' book, Henry the Flying Emu. Um, I'd like to also thank my generous nominators. They know who they are. Uh, my mentors and teachers who I feel very lucky to have learnt from over the years, uh, my family who have the biggest support, uh, and finally, the Australian Museum. Uh, the real value of these awards, I think, is to help this kind of work continue in the future. And uh, that's what I'll hope to do in promoting, promoting the understanding of science. But thank you very much. It's, it's an honour and uh, back you, to you, Adam. You've touched on this a little bit in your answer already, but just the sheer breadth of medium you used, primetime television, podcasts, even a children's book to spread your message. You're a one-man media conglomerate. What is it about <laughs> promoting science that excites you so much? Oh, I'm obsessed. No, um, yeah. Uh, 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 I think it's uh, it's getting the the message out there about what everyone is working on. The people on this call, um, the people uh, at this event, the, the research that they're doing, um, it's communicating that. But also um, helping people understand the process of science, evidence based thinking, and critical uh, evidence based reasoning and critical thinking, and, and data based learning. Um, and if we can teach that, I think hopefully to our young ones, um, then maybe that'll give them a chance to make better decisions than generations before them. And, and you don't shy away from the tough topics. One of your children's books was about gravity. Now, I know some really smart people who struggle with the concept of gravity. You weren't afraid to take on a big one there. No, oh, no. I, I mean, at its heart, it's, it's pretty simple. You'd know that. Um, you'd know that, Adam. I think, uh, I think the best science is, is you, can, you can boil it down. The best science is the simple science. And I think kids, kids love that and they warm to it. And we gave it a good crack with, um, with Adam, the illustrator. And there must be something just about the joy in the eyes of seeing a kid who finally gets it or gets the taste for it or just thinks, wow, this is something I might want to know a bit more about. Tell us about that sort of feeling when you see it happen in the eyes of the people you're talking to. Yeah, it's magical. Um, see them learning about the universe. I mean, kids are learning all the time, um, but seeing them uh, have that spark of understanding, that realisation that the world is understandable, that they can learn how things work, I think is is beautiful i think there's a whole bunch of people here and people involved tonight um have that feeling every day in their work when they communicate it and it's nice to be able to communicate some of their work and um help spark those little fires of imagination in little ones well it was an absolutely hot field in this category there there can be only one winner congratulations dr naraj lal and thank you so much duncan challen Next is the Finkel Foundation 2021 Eureka Prize for Long Form Science Journalism. Joining us to announce the award is Dr Alan Finkel AO. And at a time when many people consider long form journalism to be a tweet and a link attached, it's important more than ever to acknowledge excellence in engaging, accurate and expertly crafted stories focusing on a scientific topic. Here are this year's finalists. Kate Cole Adams. Dr. Diani Lewis. Dr. Jackson Ryan, CNET. There we have our three finalists, fantastic long form journalists. There can be only one winner. You know a lot about great journalism. Dr. Finkel, over to you. Well, thank you, Adam. We're delighted to support the journalists who take the time to analyse the facts that inspire and educate their readers. Communication should be more than a stream of short statements and clickbait headlines. Give me a written story any time. Congratulations to all the finalists. The winner of the 2021 Finkel Foundation Eureka Prize for Long-Form Science Journalism is... Dr. Diani Lewis. Congratulations, Diani. Well, I, oh my, I, I'm speechless. <laughs> um, uh, I, I guess the first people that I'd really love to thank are all of the wonderful scientists who take the time out of their very busy lives to speak to journalists and science writers because without them we would not be able to tell the stories of science in the way that we do. Um, for this piece I spoke to a number of uh, fabulous um, Australian scientists, James McCaw, Rainer McIntyre, Mikhail Prokopenko, um, George Milne uh, and plenty of others and I've spoken to dozens uh, over the the 
past 18 months in reporting about COVID, which, as everyone knows, is an incredibly important topic. Um, I also want to shout out to um, my editors at Cosmos magazine, which has been a great supporter of long-form science journalism, uh, Gail McCallum and Ian Con uh, Connellan. The Finkel Foundation, which is supporting uh, long-form science journalism. And, of course, my my fellow finalists, Jackson Ryan, Kate Cole-Adams, uh, and a final shout-out also to the Science Journalists Association of Australia, who is um, raising the bar, celebrating each other's wins and really raising the profile of... Um, of science journalism in Australia and I think together we're um, we're all working on telling the stories of, uh, of science uh, more broadly and better and um, yeah it's it's a great job to have I have to say. <laughs> Downey as, as a mathematics nerd myself I want to thank you so much for shining a light on the science of mathematical disease modelling. Why did you pick that particular subject? Well, you know, I mean, at the beginning of, of last year, everyone became familiar with the idea of flattening the curve and uh, it just became such, it just had such a presence in everyone's life, mathematical disease modelling. And it's it was incredible to have a look at uh, some of the history of mathematical disease modelling, how some models have changed really very little in the last hundred years, but then also there are really complex, almost virtual worlds being developed by um, by mathematical modellers uh, to try and, you know, recreate uh, modern society and how we all interact and pass viruses between each other. So it's a fascinating topic and, um, yeah, it was... Uh, and, and it's got this outsized influence on our lives. It still does and it still will for the foreseeable future as we, as we all hopefully sometime begin to exit <laughs> COVID lockdowns. It's been an amazing 18 months where people wake up and the very first thing they think of is mathematical modelling. They don't even realise they're doing it. Thank you for shining a light on this important and beautiful science. Congratulations, Dr Diane Lewis, and thank you, Dr Alan Finkel, for your support. Thank you, Adam. The before we announce our next winner, the Australian Museum Research Institute Medal, I'd like to ask Professor Chris Helgen to speak on behalf of AMRI. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, Adam. It's been a huge year for the Australian Museum Research Institute. In my first full year as Chief Scientist and Director of AMRI, I couldn't be prouder of everything our scientists have accomplished during this challenging time. Scientists at the Australian Museum Research Institute research, communicate, and educate the public on some of today's most important challenges. Now, this includes the aftermath of the mega bushfires from 2019 to 20, including a large federal government funded project examining the impacts of the fire season on invertebrates. We also responded to bushfire recovery with citizen science. Australians around our nation participated in our programs, such as Frog ID, in record numbers, providing an up-to-the-minute evaluation of the state of nature across the Australian bush and in our own backyards. AMRI researchers studied the impacts of climate change and invasive species on many endangered wildlife species, and through our forensic wildlife work, helped fight criminals responsible for the illegal, illegal international wildlife trade. We rediscovered lost and missing species, such as some of Australia's rarest snails, and launched an emergency captive breeding program for some of them. Our physical spaces have continued to grow with transformation of our world-class collections, care, and conservation lab. Our citizen science projects have also grown with our platform, Digivol, celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. AMRI is now in its second year of the Collection Enhancement Project, an ambitious 10-year project to digitize and conserve our 19.5 million natural science specimens. And this year, we recruited specialized staff, including many digital technical officers, to help barcode our storage spaces and specimens and to digitize, including creation of 3D renderings, many of our behind-the-scenes collections. Although fieldwork was limited, our scientists still undertook critical fieldwork across Australia's mainland, island, and marine habitats, including groundbreaking fossil digs and archaeological excavations. 
During the last financial year, 218 new species were described by AMRI and 255 publications were published by our scientists. From a new species of trilobite named after Dr. Who's Tom Baker, to over 44 species of crustacean described in a single paper by our own Professor Shane Ah Yong, to new species of monkey and gigantic flying squirrels, discovery never stops at AMRI. Indeed, thanks, Chris. And if you want to see some of the highlights from that emergency captive snail breeding program, it's on the museum's website. It's slow, but <laughs> very hot. Anyway, the winner of the Australian Museum Research Institute Medal will be announced by Professor Kathy Belov AO. She's the Pro Vice Chancellor, Global Engagement at the University of Sydney, and trustee of the Australian Museum. Professor Belov. Thank you, Adam. The AMRI Medal recipient is awarded to an Australian Museum staff member, senior fellow or team for their outstanding science and communication of research outcomes. Previous awardees include Ross Pogson, Dr Robin Torrance, Dr Richard Major and Dr Rebecca Johnson, among others. The AMRI Medal recipient this evening is an outstanding marine biologist with more than 40 years experience in research, museum policy and management. This year's AMRI Medal is awarded to Dr Penny Berents. This year Penny celebrates her 50th year at the Australian Museum. She joined the museum in 1971 as a technical officer and this year paused her senior fellowship to take on her former role as manager of life and geosciences. This encompasses all of the museum's natural science collections, from herpetology to paleontology, and is home to many of AMRI's passionate scientists, students, honorary fellows, and collaborators. Dr. Penny Behrens is an extraordinary scientist whose research interests include the biodiversity and systematics of crustaceans. Penny has described more than 20 new species of amphipod crustacean and several new genera. Penny is also a scuba diving instructor and boat handler and has led numerous research and education field trips all around Australia and the Pacific from the Great Barrier Reef and the Coral Sea to the waters of Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands and Timor-Leste. Penny has also participated in pivotal deep sea expeditions studying invertebrate biodiversity, including many of the CSIRO research investigator expeditions. Dr. Behrens has not only excelled as a fantastic researcher, but also as a mentor, collection manager and data manager. During Pen Penny's time as head of natural sciences, she implemented the modern databasing system at the Australian Museum and spearheaded a number of digitization projects, including Digivol. As a leader in her field, Penny is also the immediate past president and honorary life member of the Australian Marine Science Association trustee of the Lizard Island Reef Research Foundation and is the Lizard Island Reef Research Foundation Science Committee Chair. She is also part of the National Marine Science Committee. Penny, we congratulate you on your phenomenal achievements and it's an honour to present the AMRI Medal to you tonight. Thank you, Professor Velov, for your wonderful words. I'm truly honoured and surprised to receive the 2021 AMRI Medal. I feel very privileged to have a career in science at the Australian Museum, doing something I love and receiving this medal is very special. Thank you everyone for this amazing evening. Thank you again, Cathy, and congratulations to all tonight's Eureka finalists. Well, congratulations, Dr. Penny Berents, and being named the latest recipient of the AMRI Medal. And a big thank you to Dr. Cathy Belov for joining us to announce the award. It's time now for the second of tonight's Sleek Geeks Awards. We turn our attention to the 2021 University of Sydney Sleek Geeks Science Eureka Prize Secondary. Returning to announce the runners-up and winner are Professor Ian Young from the University of Sydney and TikTok sensation Dr Karl Kruzelnitsky. This is awarded for a short film that communicates a scientific concept in an accessible and engaging way and the prizes this year again were on the theme of big. Let's meet our finalists. 
Jonathan Davis, Rewilding Earth, The Big Issue, Townsville Grammar School, Queensland. Rewilding is exactly what it sounds like. Increasing the biodiversity of our Earth by creating more wild habitat for things to live in. Our world is a giant ecosystem and it depends on its biodiversity to survive. Just imagine what would happen if all the trees disappeared. Unfortunately, scientists estimate that the extinction rate today is hundreds of times higher than normal. Isaac Newey, Ethan Paget, Reuben Riddle and Alex Sedov. Square Cube Law, Williton Senior High School, Western Australia. Blue whales, why are they so big and what limits their size? Due to them living underwater, they don't have to support their own weight due to buoyancy. This leaves the main limitation in size to be getting enough nutrients, which for a blue whale is achieved through eating massive quantities of krill, up to 3.6 tonnes per day. So their size is based on how much food is available to consume. Sonia Richenko. How to get to Mars, a big question. Eltham High School, Victoria. May have a solution or a temporary workaround. One much bigger problem that is much harder to solve would be how are we going to grow food and drink water on Mars? Martian soil is made up of toxic minerals and is continuously exposed to radiation and freezing temperatures. Well done everyone, it's my pleasure to announce these awards. Third place is awarded to Isaac Nui, Ethan Paget, Ruben Riddle and Alex Seedorf. Second place is awarded to Sonia Radchenko. And the winner of the 2021 University of Sydney Sleep Geek Science Eureka Prize Secondary is Jonathan Davis. Fantastic stuff. Congratulations, Jonathan. Dr. Carl, I'll throw to you in the TARDIS. What did you think of this epic secondary school science film, Carl? Uh, well, fellow Sleek Geek, Dr. Adam, it was just amazing. You mentioned earlier how widely branched in their thinking these entries and everything tonight has been. Blow me down, wilding and biodiversity. Dr. Jonathan, what made you come up with those concepts? So I was actually reading David Attenborough's new book, uh, it's called A Life on Our Planet, and it really inspired me. It talked about a lot of practical solutions for climate change, things that we could actually do. And one of them that really struck me that I hadn't heard a lot was uh, increasing biodiversity on Earth. And so that, it was at that moment that I knew I wanted to do my Eureka video about that. And so I did. And seven months later, <laughs> here we are. And how did you manage to do those smoothly flowing graphics? You have covered this from so many different aspects. Oh, a lot of blood, sweat and tears. Um. <laughs> Adam, Ian. Wonderful stuff. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Carl. And well done, Jonathan Davis. And what a great little plug for David Attenborough too. And to our runners-up, Sonia Radchenko, Zara Matty, Isaac Newey, Ethan Paget, Ruben Riddle and Alex Setoff. Now, as I said earlier, as part of their prize, the winners and runners-up will receive vouchers to the wonderful Abbey's Bookshop. Thank you again, Professor Ian Young and Dr Carl Kruzelnitsky for guiding us through the Sleek Geeks categories for another year. It's time to welcome back for the third and final time tonight, the hardest working woman in Australian science show business, Australia's chief scientist, Dr. Kathy Foley, who will announce the winner of the 2021 Eureka Prize for Leadership in Innovation and Science. This is a prize awarded to an individual who successfully integrated their science talents with their management skills necessary to nurture, inspire, and mobilise their peers. Let's meet our finalists. Dr. Dana M. Bergstrom, Australian Antarctic Division and University of Wollongong. Dr. Maria Cavallaris, AM, University of New South Wales and Children's Cancer Institute. Professor Sharon Robinson, University of Wollongong. Three amazingly talented women at the absolute top of their game. For the final time tonight, over to you, Kathy Foley. I'll get you to take yourself off mute there, Kathy, and repeat that, please. Like that. Sorry. 
here we go. Try again. It's been great to actually listen through all night. It's so exciting to see what great science we've got and fantastic dedicated people across Australia. I'm so grateful to be able to be the Chief Scientist of Australia and be one who is leading everyone. So, again, the uh, opportunity to announce the winner of the 2021 Eureka Prize in Leadership in Innovation and Science goes this year to Dr. Dana M. Burstrand. Very, very much a congratulations from me. Well done, Matt. Dana. Congratulations on your Eureka Prize. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. Um, I'm totally thrilled. Um, but first, I should point out I'm from Lutruita and in the Munu, Munuwina people here. Um, I'd like to thank the Australian Museum, the judges and my dear colleague who put me forward for consideration for this award. And I'm absolutely honoured to be one of the seven female scientists from a total of nine finalists in science leadership. And even more so amongst the peers of the calibre of Dr. Professor Maria Calver, Cavaralis and Sharon Robinson. Um, it's, it's really hard to be what you can't see and I hope tonight demonstrates that good science emerges from diverse teams and that if you're persistent and you can contribute to the developing of bright ideas, you have a place in science. And I say contribute because most science is collaborative and it builds upon previous ideas. And there's no better place to illustrate this than in Antarctica, um, the continent set aside for peace and science and nature. And only this week we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Protocol for Environmental Protection. The protocol was developed by Australia and France, and it's a place where science collaboration happens across all nations and science collaboration is paramount and it's a place where listening to scientists, those who join the dots first, um, for all of us is actually an opportunity for, um, for us to be heard. So thank you so much. Over the last 18 months, a lot of people have considered working from home, working from the office. A stunning landscape to consider as your office. What is it about Antarctica that excites you so much? Oh, it gets under your skin. Um, it's so special. It's the uh, the end of uh, planetary life as we know it. Um, if I lift up a little rock in Antarctica, I can find up to 30 or 50 genera, um, not just species. There'll be hundreds of species just under little rock. So it's a very special place, but also it's a place of collaboration. Dana, just quickly, how is that beautiful place holding up? Um, well, the whole thing is that we're picking up signs of ecosystem collapse, even in Antarctica um, and on Macquarie Island. Um, so it's it's a bellwether at the moment for us to uh, pay attention to major changes that are happening on the planet. Well, well said and keep up the fantastic and important work. Congratulations, Dr. Dana M. Bergstrom. And a big thank you to Cathy Foley for your incredible support this evening. And to announce the winner of our penultimate award, the 2021 UNSW Eureka Prize for Scientific Research, I'm joined by Deputy Vice-Chancellor Research and Enterprise at UNSW, Professor Nicholas Fisk AM. This prize is awarded for outstanding curiosity-driven scientific research. And our finalists are... Professor Anita Hobaley, Dr Martin Bucknell and Dr Lei Shi. University of Sydney and University of New South Wales. Associate Professor Diane McDougall and Dr Gustavo Espinosa Vergara, University of Technology, Sydney. Professor Justin J. Yerbury, AM, University of Wollongong. Please do the honours, Professor Fisk. Hey, Adam. So there are some other awards going on this week named after some bloke who discovered dynamite, I think. But the Eurekas are the biggies. So it gives me great pleasure to announce the winners of the 2021 UNSW Eureka Prize for Scientific Research. Associate Professor Diane McDougall and Dr. Gustavo Espinosa Vergara. Chapeau Congratulations to our winners. Joining us here is Professor Diane McDougall. Congratulations, Professor. Wow, thank you. Um, well, we're very excited for this opportunity. Um, this work started 
many years ago um, with a student person, Nurian, who was in the lab and noticed these um, food vacuoles that were expelled and it was expanded by Gustavo, who did his PhD on this. So I would also like to acknowledge the rest of the molecular evolution team in the I3 Institute uh, at the University of Technology, Sydney. And we really hope this, this work highlights how we need to, to start to look at how pathogens evolve in the environment um, rather than looking at interactions with the host, the human host, that they ultimately colonise. Yeah, you discovered something new about a particularly nasty little critter, Vibrio cholerae. What did you learn? So we learned that um, Vibrio cholerae in the environment becomes super pathogenic when it gets eaten by protozoa, which are the normal um, predators for bacteria in the environment. So when, when it gets eaten, it gets packaged and expelled. They're super infectious and um, readily colonize the human. So... These uh, packages are things we don't normally look for in the environment. So we need to, to change how we look for, for pathogens when in the environment. We need to understand how they uh, interact with other organisms. We're lucky enough in Australia not to have to think about cholera all that much, but there's been outbreaks in Yemen, Algeria, Zimbabwe. What do you hope we can learn to deal with future outbreaks in this space? Well, we don't have to think so much about cholera, but other pathogens uh, do this as well. Um, Campylobacter, Legionella. So all of these pathogens interact with protists in the environment and get packaged. And they're basically invisible to the methods that we use to look for them. So while cholera may not be a big problem in Australia... You know, Legionella certainly is. So it's other pathogens that we have to start looking for. Congratulations. Such important groundbreaking work. Associate Professor Diane McDougald and Dr Gustavo Espinosa Vergara. And thank you, Professor Nicholas Fisk, for joining us. And so we come to our final Eureka Prize of the night, the 2021 AstraZeneca Eureka Prize for Emerging Leader in Science. Joining us to announce the winner is Country President of AstraZeneca, Australia and New Zealand, Liz Chatwin. This prize is to an individual scientist who's used their leadership skills to create impact within their discipline or more broadly. And here are our finalists. Associate Professor Kristen Carson Chahoud. University of South Australia. Associate Professor Brett Hallam, University of New South Wales. Jane Tiller, Monash University. Well, congratulations to all of our finalists wherever they join us around Australia. Liz Chapman, please, our winner. So thanks so much, Adam. So representing a company here tonight that absolutely believes in what science can do, I'm delighted to announce the winner of the 2021 AstraZeneca Eureka Prize for Emerging Leader in Science is Associate Professor Kristen Carson Chahoud. Well, congratulations, Kristen. You've won yourself a Eureka Prize. Wow. Um, I'm absolutely blown away to be named as an emerging leader alongside Brett Hallam and Jane Tiller and all the amazing scientists that have showcased their work today on this award. The efforts of my work and from what I can hear of everybody here is that of hundreds of people. And these awards bring everyone together, especially during these COVID times, is just incredible to see. Um, a few people in particular who have mentored me, Malcolm Brin, Adrian Esterman, John Horowitz, Tanya Buchanan, Nicholas Burrier, and all of the Thoracic Society of Australia and New Zealand. We all have our passions and our battles. Mine is against the research to evidence gap, getting evidence into the hands of patients, fighting against big tobacco, and reducing inequality gaps between Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and that of non-Indigenous populations. And on that note, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm on the land of the Ghana people. And um, 
unlike our battles, which all seem to be going really well, my husband, I have to acknowledge as well, he's currently trying to put our one-year-old, two-year-old and four-year-old to sleep, and his battle is not going so well. Um, but thank you very much. Oh, a big hello to your husband at the front of the action there. Look, we've come a long way in tobacco control, but we do still have a long way to go, don't we? Absolutely. Just recently, Philip Morris International has bought over Vectura, which is a company who um, manufacture inhaler medications for asthma and COPD. And that means that they're now profiting on treating the diseases for the products, for the, for the actual diseases their products create. They're now profiting from treating those diseases. It's incredible. And with um, electronic cigarettes coming into the market now, it's only going to get worse. Look, you've done amazing stuff. You've used augmented reality and all sorts of things to break the communication cycle, to change things up in this space. Congratulations on your Eureka Prize. So deserved. Associate Professor Kristen carson Shahood, And thank you so much, Liz Chapman, for presenting our last award of the evening. Well, for one last time, it's back to our panel. Bernie, an amazing night, some fantastic winners to bring us home. What's resonated for you over the last little while? Oh, spectacular stuff, but I have to say, I can't go past Nij Lal, who is one of the science communicators that this country needs and is giving so many platforms to just get out there and shed the word, spread the word. Nij is, when it comes to communicating, he is the quadruple package. Like, he can excel on any medium, and he starts where his audience is and brings them with him, plus... He's hideously authentic. He is just the real deal. Television, podcasts, books. Live. He's not he shy. Sings, he's, you know, it's a little annoying, actually. I was one of his assessors, and it's just endless ticking of boxes going, yes, he's perfect, go away now. He's, <laughs> he's just fantastic. Chris, what else has jumped out at you, mate? Oh, so many great winners. A few, the uh, Karin Carney uh, Art and Culture Centre with the mm. studies on language vitality, drawing from so many disciplines. You know, it's, it's the vitality of... Australia's languages and how they've changed, how they're going to continue forward that, you know, is part of what makes a special, uh, Australia such a special place. And the, the, the mathematical modelling comes up again in, in being Which, able to analyse that. That's right. That's, that's uh, a mathematician heavily involved there. Um, and math came up again in, uh, with Deanne Lewis yeah. uh, with uh, her long-form journalism piece. Uh, she looked surprised to win. I wasn't surprised. I've been following her work a long time. Tremendous stuff, this piece in Cosmos about mm -hmm. math mathematical modelling of epidemiology. Because she, she touched on this. That most people don't realise it, but for the last 18 months, most people have mm -hmm. woken up and the first thing they've thought is, how many cases overnight? Yep. How many could we trace back? And when what, can I get a haircut? What's, what's the 14-day <laughs> rolling average yeah. in Victoria? And when can Bernie get a haircut? Yeah. It, mathematical modelling has just seeped into the conversation. Absolutely. Like two years ago, you know, flattening the curve was a familiarity to every epidemiologist mm. on the planet, but now to every person on the planet. You know, Danny captures that really well. And just all the different things that have become part of our natural language from mRNA vaccines yeah. to, you know, Kate daily case counts. Uh, our world has been changed. One of the comments on Twitter was from Nick Hopwood. He said, a rare moment to celebrate people who go above and beyond in research. Congratulations to all the finalists and winners at Hashtag Eureka Prizes. Judging was very hard. You touched on this slightly. For, mm. for the assessors, the judges, what is that process like? And then I'll get you to explain how we just can't do it without them. It's uh, brutal. It is. Well, I haven't been a judge for a number of years, but it was hellishly full on, like 30 odd hours just right from the start. You go through, you've got to argue your case for each of them. There's a bit of a, a, a short list, but it's really incredibly rigorous. So don't think anyone's just being handed this because they can sing and dance. It's... Yep really rigorous. And we simply could not do it without the expertise well, no. and the generous giving of time of these people. That's absolutely right. And the viewers at home can see that, you know, when you see the quality of all of the finalists, how hard it has to be to mm. judge between them. Uh, that that uh, Twitter commenter was talking about just the tremendous scientists just a moment ago. And I have to give a shout out to one of my own, Dr. P Dr. Penny Barrents, who won that Amory medal. Um, Penny is a tremendous uh, marine biologist. She's also a wonderful person, one of my favourites. Congratulations. Congratulations tonight, Pat. And just that common theme of the scientists who we're seeing who are not just doing work because they're gun passionate about it, like um, Emma Camp right at the start, but 
they're really spending a lot of their extra time in um, bringing other people from community, yep. from business, from government. They're really giving their all, not just in the work, but in um, bringing everyone along with them. It's been an absolute honour, hasn't it? Thank you, Bernie, and thank you, Chris, for joining us. It's been Pleasure. great to have you as part of the show. A huge thanks Sorry. and congratulations to all our winners, runners-up, finalists, for joining us for this special night. And I'd like to thank the Australian Museum, in particular, Kim McKay, for the opportunity to be your host. It's always a pleasure. And speaking of Kim, let me hand over to her now for some closing remarks. Thank you, Adam. It just wouldn't be the Eureka Prizes without you. I'd like to offer my heartfelt thanks to you for all you do to promote science and maths in Australia and your brilliant hosting as MC this evening. And to all those behind the scenes who've made tonight possible from our producers, Fourth Wall, to Jeremy Garling and his team, you're just brilliant. And our commentators here in the studio, Bernie Hobbs and Professor Chris Helgen. And to the fantastic Eureka Prizes team at the Australian Museum, James Lotherington and Kate Smith, thank you so much for all your diligent work. I cannot conclude the evening without offering one last congratulations to all of our superb winners tonight, to all the nominees and the prize partners and program supporters who make the Australian Museum Eureka Prizes and this award ceremony possible. Congratulations all. Thank you so much, Kim, and best of luck with your reopening next Monday. That concludes the show. I want to thank you for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you again for the Eureka Prizes in 2022. But for now, let's take one more moment to celebrate the work of the winners of the 2021 Australian Museum Eureka Prizes. I'm Adam Spencer. Good night. <laughs>